Hey guys, what's up? It's Destry. I am having a really lousy yardening day. <laughs> um, I may have lost a battle in my yard, but I have not lost the war. I'm not giving up my fight yet, so stick around and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here in Willamette Valley, Oregon, zone 8B, it is mid-September. I guess it's mid-September. I can't believe that. I mean, I feel like my kids just went back to school. I'm a teacher. I feel like I just went back to school, but we still have some warm days left. We still have some time before the first frost date. If you're a gardener of any kind, I have two words for you. Powdery mildew. You guys, it when your garden gets powdery mildew and I feel like here in Oregon we had literally one maybe two like rainy days like not very not very much just like you know a couple sprinkly rainy days and ever since then I have been fighting powdery mildew in my garden beds like and it's spreading and so this is just a reminder, if you're a gardener or a yardener, as I like to call it, um, you're going to have bad days. You're going to have things that don't work out. You're going to have plants that die. You're going to have things that don't grow. You're going to have junk that happens in your yard or your garden. And I'm trying to like be cool about it, but let me show you what's going on in my yard right now because it is really crappy. It's crappy. So let me show you. All right, guys, I thought about not making this video. I'm not going to lie, but I decided that it is important to show the good with the bad. This that you are looking at is bad. Okay, this is powdery mildew. So these are my squash. You can see I still have some zucchinis on. Um, but there is powdery mildew everywhere. And once you get it, it just, you know, it's a mold, it's a mildew. So it just continues to spread. Over here in my pumpkin patch, um, I still have a couple pumpkins that I'm waiting to ripen, like this one here. I have this one, which is my only pumpkin of this variety that I have. It's a like a Cinderella, like kind of a chubby or fat pumpkin, and it's supposed to get all white. I have one down here. Actually, I could probably go ahead and harvest this little one here, one that didn't make it there. But I still have some flowers, you know, happening on this plant, but I also have powdery freaking mildew. <clears throat> Excuse me. You guys, I'm so upset. So I'm trying to make the decision about what to do. So these are my potatoes over here, and the potatoes are pretty much. I think they're pretty much done, but then I have ones like this that are green and looking good. But then I have ones that are like looking like this, you know, that are kind of like done. I cut a few of these off yesterday. You can see right here. So I have ones that are looking like this and I don't know if that's just the powdery mildew or if it's, if they're done for the season, but then I have ones like this, you know, that are looking super healthy. So I'm like, do I pull them all? And just to top things off for a yardening fail or annoyance, if I can get in here, I have squash bugs right back here. See that little guy? He is a squash bug and I have them all over this particular garden bed and probably the other ones at this point. So I've been thinking about it. Do I pull everything? Because some of the leaves are looking healthy. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just ate dinner, so I'm kind of got a frog in my throat. Um, I did find, check this out. I've got two little, where are they at? Two little uh, cucumbers. They're cute. They're little fat ones. But then I have powdery mildew. So I'm like about ready to just pull it all. Like just be done for the season. And honestly, I've been thinking about it and I'm like, well, I could sit here and try to like groom these plants and 
you know, just cut off the leaves that have the mildew and try to prolong this for like a little bit more time. Or I could just call it a day. Just call it a season, pull this stuff out and make some room for maybe like some fall crops. So that's what's going on in my garden beds. But let me show you why it gets worse. Because this is my dahlia that's beautiful. Oh no, but guess what? Powdery freaking mildew and a Milo down there. Milo. Yeah. So this is the problem, you guys. Once you see this, don't wait. Like if you see it on a couple of the leaves, just like get rid of those leaves, pull them off, clip it back or something or treat it. Now I do have a spray. So I think for my dahlias over here, I'm kind of bummed about these because look, I haven't even gotten any blooms from this one. Again, it's just, I feel like it's a fail. I should have dealt with it when I saw the first little bit of it, but it happens so fast. This one seems to be okay for now, but these over here have affected my plants clear on the other side of my, my uh, yard on this side, on the other side here. So it's really frustrating. And it doesn't end there. I've got it on my zinnias, more powdery mildew on plants that should be blooming throughout this month. Can you guys see it? I mean, it's just such a bummer. I'm so bummed. I'm just so bummed. And so, again, I thought about not making this video because, you know, you don't want to share your fails, but like you do because you know what? It happens to everybody. I mean, look at the blooms are so gorgeous. So like, I don't want to cut this back. So on these, again, I have some spray. I'm going to try to treat um, and see what I can do. And then I was going to show you this. I actually pulled out all the stuff that was in this bed, except for the um, bulbs there in the back um, to make room for some spring bulbs. So I have some tulips coming any day now in the mail and uh, they set into September. And so I wanted to make room for those. So I pulled the scabiosa, which I'm letting dry. I thought maybe I could try to use it like in a wreath or a craft or something. We'll see. But yeah, you guys, powdery mildew. Tell me in the comments, have you ever dealt with this? Were you able to win the war? I don't know. It might be too late. This bed's looking beautiful. It might be too late, um, but I'm not going to give up. So tonight I am going to set my camera up and I'm going to spend an hour or so. That's about all the time I have. Hopefully it won't take me that long, but I'm going to cut back what I, what I have to over here in the garden and I'm going to treat the rest and I'm going to hope for the best and we'll see how it goes. So here goes nothing. A couple more things before I get started. If you're dealing with a problem like this, I've got an old pair of clippers. I'm going to scrub and bleach these when I'm done just so I don't spread this any further. Everything that I clipped today is going straight into the garbage. Um, I'm not going to compost anything. And then Farmer's Defense sleeves. If you haven't tried these, I'll link a video where I did kind of a review of these. Um, it's not sponsored or anything. I just bought them. But these um, pumpkin and squash branches make me so incredibly itchy. Um, so... If you are a gardener or yardener and you haven't tried them, highly recommend you get yourself a pair for jobs like this. That way I don't have to put on a long sleeve shirt and die of heat exhaustion, but my arms are protected against the itchies. All right, let's go ahead and get started on this chore. Oh, and gloves.
sweating. <laughs> I'm taking a break. Um, yeah, I don't know, you guys. I, so I here's what I did. I pulled up, well, I cut back all the potatoes so I can dig them up. You can see there's a little potato right there behind me. I can pop those up. Um, I left most of the pumpkins because there's still like two or three that are on the vine. And I just, I kind of want them to ripen up a little bit more. I think if they weren't there, I would just like take them all out. So, but I might wait. I might wait like a week or so, see if those ones turn. And I don't think I have time to get any new, you know, even if they did flower at this point, there's no time for them to produce. So um, the only reason I'm leaving them is to see, oh my gosh, to see, um, to let those ones ripen. Anyway, it's a lot here. Let me show you. I mean, it doesn't look like much, but it's a lot. <laughs> and then the squash, I pulled a couple that were like not my favorite kinds, but I left a couple zucchinis because there's, again, there's still ones on the vine. Um, there was one butternut squash that the plant was still alive. The other two that I found were super tiny, but the plants were dead. So I pulled those. But the last butternut is um, the plant still alive. So I'm hoping it'll get a little bit bigger. I don't know. Tell me in the comments. If it was you, would you just rip the whole sucker out? <laughs> all the pumpkins? Or would you? All I know is I'm left with quite a mess. And Milo and Max are super excited to help me dig these potatoes up. They are already like ready to dig them for me. Um, it's a mess, not too many squash bugs. So how do you get part powdery mildew? Like what are the causes? A couple things. At this late in the game, I mean, I feel like it's just max. It's because, you know, it's kind of the end of the season and stuff's just fizzling out. The rain, I don't think helped. I also noticed part of the problem, I think, was watering the grass. So we set the sprinkler to water the grass and that moisture, I think, was kind of wicking up into the garden bed so that's something to note for next year maybe not close you know plant so close to the edge of the garden beds and then overcrowding all those big giant leaves with the hollow stems when there's too many of them in there every time you water there's just too much moisture and it just contributes to the powdery mildew so if i had drip system which hopefully next summer we're going to get some drip installed um, even if i have to do it myself um, because if you bottom water, I think there's less, you're less prone to that issue. So anyway, that's what's happening. I'm feeling better about it. I have a lot of cleanup to do. <laughs> and then I have to go treat my dahlias. So I'll show you what I'm going to use to treat them after I get this all cleaned up. More to come. All right, guys, here's my mess. <laughs> I love my little pop-up bag. It's like, help me. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't quite cut it to use the pop-up bag for this chore. But anyway, so this bed, I clipped everything back. But you can see there's still some healthy zucchini back here. Um, there's a couple producing here, these yellow ones. There's one right there. So, like, I just tried to really, like, cut everything back. Sorry about my barking dogs. And, um, you know, do the best I could to clean these up and see if I can at least let those ones ripen. I did find one more cute little cucumber right there. So I've got two more cucumbers. And then this is the um, butternut squash that I found that's still got a vine that's alive. So I'm going to see if I can get any more growth on that one. But this vine right here, this is a pumpkin vine. It goes all the way over there. And, you know, it's still flowering. It's still doing things, but there's no time for any more pumpkins to form this season. So even though a few of the pumpkins that are already here, I want to give them some time to develop. So there's this one, which honestly probably just needs a couple more days. There's that cute little Cinderella one I showed you. And then I did find one more. Um, I found one more cute little one right down there. It's super cute. But you can see there's also like this long tendril that goes this way. So I'm going to clip this one too because again there's just no time for even if it's flowering there's no time for this um, pumpkin to do anything this season and then the potatoes i went ahead and clipped them all back i'm going to get my pitchfork out and just dig those up and then i will have a whole garden bed here 
ready for some fall plants. I could do some broccoli, some cooler weather plants, but look at the mess. I've got, I've got quite a mess to clean up. Um, but yeah, that's what I've got going on. I looked at this one. I thought, mm, maybe, maybe if it's one of those little tiny white ones, it would have time, but I don't know. Anyway, that's what's going on. And then I'm going to try to treat my dahlias. I'm going to try to spray my dahlias and my um, zinnias and see if I can stop this powdery mildew situation. So more on that to come. I'm losing daylight. Anyway, this is what I'm going to try to treat the dahlias and the zinnias with. Okay, so this is a garden fungicide. I don't think it's... Um, it's not truly a pesticide it's organic um, for flowers fruit and veggies so i have used this on powdery mildew before and it does help i wouldn't say it's like perfect but it'll help so i don't want to have to cut these back like i did the squash because the squash are kind of done i don't really care but i want to try to save as many of my flowers as i can so i'm going to treat them with this and hopefully that will help the powdery mildew situation So I went ahead and treated the best I could. I need to get another bottle, but you can kind of see where it's shiny. You can, so you can kind of see it when you spray it, but I mainly tried to concentrate on like the tops up here where I have, you know, buds still forming. Um, that's where I want to be sure to kind of concentrate on the mildew. And unfortunately, even though I got this far, I looked over here briefly and I have powdery mildew over here. I get scream. I'm going to get another jar of that. But look at my pretty dahlia. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, it doesn't seem to mind, but it will in a few short days here. And get this. I also have it over here on my gourds, which to be honest, I don't know if I'm going to actually get any gourds. I'm kind of bummed out. They're little baby ones, but anyway, so I might just end up ripping this whole thing out, but check it out. That dang powdery mildew. So this is a cautionary tale. If you notice powdery mildew, grab yourself some of that antifungal spray and treat it immediately. Cut off the leaves. Otherwise, you're going to end up like me, even if just ignoring it for a little bit. I don't know. It could just be the time in the season. Things are fizzling, like I said, but it's still really frustrating when you, you know, have plants that still are in bloom, but then they have that mildew on them. So again, I need to get another jar of it because this one's pretty coated. Um, but again, this one over here is clean. So I treated this one um, as a preliminary, but I need to go get some more spray. So I'm going to do that. Anyway, but over here, I do feel good that everything's kind of cleaned up over here. I can see if I can get a few more squash. All the pumpkins are cleaned up. I can see my stepping stones on the side. I mean, I didn't like sweep them off, but my stepping stones on the opposite side of my garden bed. So that's nice. Um, and then I think tomorrow night, because I'm out of steam tonight and it won't hurt anything, um, I'll pick up those few potatoes that pop, popped out of the ground so they don't sit in the sun. But tomorrow night, I'll grab my pitchfork and I will um, see what kind of harvest I got. And it won't hurt anything to let the potatoes. In fact, it's kind of good for them to sit and kind of cure and make sure they're totally dry before you harvest them. So anywho, things are looking better. But like I said, a cautionary tale. Oh, and also a cautionary tale that if you plant, I don't know, five <laughs> pumpkin plants or zucchinis you're going to end up with a lot of foliage <laughs> so be careful of those zucchinis my friends and those pumpkins because if you're like me at the seed store you're like oh this is cute i'm going to grab a couple more packs and then before you know it you've got an out of control situation give me come here 
Okay, friends, that's going to be it for tonight's video. I'm beat. <laughs> My Lauren Max say happy gardening. They say go get out in your yard today. It's a fun place to be. <laughs> And if you need me, you know where to find me. I'll be in my yard. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.